Democrats are demented, genocidal war sluts. President Biden is reportedly preparing to begin a new weeks-long bombing campaign in the Middle East in retaliation for a drone attack which killed three U.S. troops this past weekend. These strikes are expected to include Iranian targets, tempting the nightmare scenario of a full-blown war with Iran, despite the public acknowledgement that there's no evidence Iran was behind the drone strike. Anti-war's Dave DeCamp explains, quote, U.S. officials told NBC News that the U.S. is planning to launch a weeks-long bombing campaign in the Middle East in retaliation for the drone attack in northeast Jordan that killed three American soldiers. The officials said that the targets are expected to include Iranian targets outside of Iran, and the campaign will involve strikes and cyber operations. Other reports have said the U.S. is considering targeting Iranians in Iraq and Syria, or the Iranian Navy. While the potential targets are not inside Iran, direct attacks on the Iranian military could provoke a full-blown war between the U.S. and Iran. The U.S. is considering taking this course of action even though the Pentagon admitted it has no evidence Iran was directly involved in the drone attack in Jordan, end quote. Iran threatened to decisively respond to any U.S. attack, either upon the Islamic Republic itself or upon the nation's interests and nationals under any pretexts. So this looks to be yet another dramatic escalation in the Middle East by the warmongering policies of the sitting U.S. president, who has also been waging a new bombing campaign in Yemen and backing a genocide in Gaza of unbelievable savagery, where starving Palestinians are now eating grass and drinking polluted water in a desperate attempt to survive. According to a memo obtained by The Intercept, U.S. troops have been put on standby for possible involvement in Israel's assault on Gaza as well. In the midst of all that murderousness, the Twitter account from this bloodthirsty ghoul of a president is posting cutesy tweets at Elmo from Sesame Street about the importance of emotional well-being, which is about the most dystopian thing you can possibly imagine. Our friend Elmo is right, Biden tweeted during an active U.S.-backed genocide. We have to be there for each other, offer our help to a neighbor in need, and above all else, Ask for help when we need it. Longtime Democratic Party leader Nancy Pelosi has been behaving even more freakishly. The former House Speaker said this past Sunday that people advocating a ceasefire in Gaza are promoting Mr. Putin's message, claiming on no basis whatsoever that some pro Palestine demonstrations are backed by Russia and should be investigated by the FBI. In a video posted the very next day by anti-war activist group Code Pink, Pelosi is seen admonishing protesters against Biden's Gaza genocide to go back to China where your headquarters is. Pelosi's demented accusation is presumably a reference to a New York Times smear piece, which used sleazy insinuations to falsely imply a connection between Code Pink and the Chinese government without ever actually showing one to exist. And not even that smear piece ever claimed that Code Pink has a headquarters in China. The progressive wing of the Democratic Party isn't much better, with political pop stars like Bernie Sanders flailing all over the place to avoid advocating a ceasefire, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez saying she fully supports Biden despite his actions in Gaza and adamantly refusing to say if the president is backing a genocide. A Democratic president engaging in genocide during a re-election year is highlighting the depravity of this warmongering capitalist party more starkly than anything else I can remember. Democrats frame themselves as responsible humanitarians who stand in opposition to the reckless murderousness and fascism of the Republican Party's worst impulses, yet here they are, openly falling all over themselves to justify mass atrocities driven by the racist feeding frenzy of a tyrannical far-right regime. In reality, the Democratic Party exists to promote the interests of the murderous U.S. empire just as much as the Republican Party does. They might sometimes promote imperial interests in different ways, in the same way the left jab and right cross are used differently in boxing. But just like a boxer uses jabs and crosses together to score a knockout blow, 
The Empire uses the Democratic and Republican parties in conjunction to keep the Imperial war machine trudging forward over human bodies year after year and administration after administration.